Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Out YouTube channel, and in the video today, we're looking at whether Sherlock Holmes was based on a real person. Just before we get started, I will say that this video is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Get your first month for five dollars, which includes an executive razor plus some shave butter. Just go to dollarshaveclub.com forward slash brain food. In 1887, Arthur Conan Doyle published the novel A Study in Scarlet. It was the first work to star Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. It was also the first record of a magnifying glass being used as a tool of investigation. A Study in Scarlet didn't attract much attention, and neither did its sequel, The Sign of Four. But in the July 1891 issue of The Strand magazine, Doyle published the first short story starring Holmes. That's when the detective began to take off in popularity. Even early on, readers wanted to know who was the basic for this new type of crime fighter. Doyle surely couldn't have just conceived this eccentric, brilliant, logical character out of thin air, right? After more than a century since Sherlock Holmes made his first appearance on paper, evidence points to Holmes being based primarily on two individuals, as well as perhaps the author himself. At the young and impressionable age of 18, Doyle was studying to be a physician at the University of Edinburgh in 1877. It was a professor by the name of Joseph Bell that drew Doyle's attention immediately. Dr. Bell's lectures were bombastic, entertaining, and fascinating. Using his amazing deductive abilities, Dr. Bell would make immediate conclusions about his patients that were often spot on. According to Doyle himself, as written in his autobiography, Bell's strong point was diagnosis of not only disease, but of occupation and character. In a famous example, also accounted in Doyle's autobiography, a man stepped forward to Bell without giving any information about himself. After a good eyeing over, Bell gave this conclusion about the man he'd never met before. Well, my man, you've served in the army, not long distance charged a Highland Regiment, a non-com officer, stationed at Barbados. Bell was correct on all of the points. He explained how he did it as follows. You see, gentlemen, the man was a respectful man, but did not remove his hat. They do not in the army, but he would have learned civilian ways had he been long discharged. He had an air of authority, and he is Scottish. As to Barbados, his complaint, why he was visiting the doctor, is elephantiasis, which is West Indian, not British, and the Scottish regiments are at present in that particular island. Conan Doyle said of such displays of bells, to his audience of Watsons, it all seemed very miraculous until it was explained, and then it became simple enough. During Doyle's second year, Bell singled him out and made him his outpatient clerk, which meant he took basic notes of the patients who came in and presented them to Bell. Essentially, he became Bell's Watson. Ten years later, when Doyle put pen to paper, this unique and wildly fascinating skill set to take trivialities and turn them into broader, accurate conclusions embodied itself in Sherlock Holmes. Doyle later admitted this freely in later life according to the biography Teller of Tales, The Life of Arthur Conan Doyle. Doyle exclaimed, Sherlock Holmes is the literary embodiment, if I may so express it, of my memory of a professor of medicine at Edinburgh University. Further, in a letter to Bell, Doyle told him, It is most certainly you I owe Sherlock Holmes. While there were major elements of Dr. John Bell in Sherlock Holmes, he wasn't the only inspiration. The famed Edinburgh native, forensic scientist, public health inspector, and dissector of human bodies, Henry Littlejohn, is also credited for giving Holmes some of his personality. Littlejohn was prominently involved in the investigations of any accident, tragic death, or murder that took place in Edinburgh in that day. Helping pioneer the use of fingerprinting and photographic evidence in criminal investigations, Littlejohn was revolutionizing the way cases were cracked right when Doyle was conceiving Holmes in the 1880s and 1890s. During the time Holmes was writing The Final Problem in 1893, the Ardlemont murder trial was taking place. Alfred John Monson was accused of shooting his 20-year-old student, Cecil Hambra, during a hunting trip. The defense claimed that Hambra accidentally shot himself in the head. According to the Edinburgh News, Little John testified that the position of the wound, the scorch marks from the bullet, the damage to the victim's skull, and even the smell of the victim indicated to the contrary. Interestingly enough, Dr. Bell was brought in as an expert witness and, using his considerable deductive powers, ultimately agreed with Little John. In the end, the jury came back with a verdict of not guilty, but Doyle used this trial and the forensic science of Henry Little John as inspiration for a part of the character of Sherlock Holmes. And finally, we have Doyle himself. Bell once wrote a letter to Doyle stating, You are yourself Sherlock Holmes, and well you know it. To illustrate, in December of 1908, Mary 
Hungarian Gilchrist was beaten to death during an armed robbery. A Jewish German immigrant was accused and then convicted of the crime. In 1909, he was sentenced to death. The following year, Scottish lawyer William Ruffhead wrote The Trial of Oscar Slater, where he laid out the case that Slater was innocent. In 1912, in the hopes of getting Slater a retrial, Arthur Conan Doyle wrote his own synopsis, The Case of Oscar Slater, in over 100 pages painstakingly highlighting details and circumstances that proved Slater's innocence, not the least of which was that the hammer found in Slater's truck, thought to be the murder weapon, was an extremely light and fragile instrument and utterly incapable, in the eyes of common sense, of inflicting those terrific injuries which had shattered the old lady's skull. Of course, this is something of a chicken and egg scenario, as it's not entirely clear if Sherlock Holmes inspired Doyle's own sleuthing or Doyle's deductive abilities and passion for the subject helped inspire Holmes. Either way, thanks in part to Doyle, Oscar Slater was acquitted and freed in 1928. Now, as for the name Sherlock Holmes, it is thought to have been taken from two sources. Holmes from the prominent and fellow doctor Oliver Wendell Holmes and Sherlock from Doyle's favorite musician, Alfred. Sherlock. And now for a bonus fact. By the late 1890s, Dr. Bell had earned quite a reputation as an investigator. So much so, in fact, that when a series of murders of Ladies of the Night went down, the police called in Bell to help. This became the infamous Jack the Ripper case. According to a November 2011 Irish Examiner article, Bell even came up with the name of a man he suspected, but as of the publication of this video, that name has never been released. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. As I mentioned at the top of the video, this one is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Now, uh, my studio is probably not the best place to give Dollar Shave Club a plug. So right now we're gonna jump to something that I made earlier at home when I was shaving my head this morning. All right, it's earlier in the day, it's the morning. Um, I bet when you tuned into today's Today I Found Out video, you didn't think you would be seeing Simon in his bathroom at home. Well, here we are. So, I'm here to talk about Dollar Shave Club. Have you ever had these? Um, let me just put that in focus, hold on. Come on, there we go. Look at this. This, this, that is what I've been shaving with up until Dollar Shave Club came along and we're like, hey Simon, let's sponsor your show. And I was like, that's pretty convenient because, listen, when you got to shave, you've got two choices. You could either spend like an enormous amount of money on one of those super expensive, I was in the store the other day, it was like this big pack of blades it was outrageously expensive. I'm not even joking. And you know, this, you could see it's well used. I'm not joking about this. This is a wonderful thing to happen to me. Sent me this beautiful, look, this isn't gonna focus well, so I'm just gonna show a shot I took of this earlier or later or whatever. It's this super nice heavy handle. Then they sent me these, these blades. You get four of them. You just pop that in there, take that out. Now, I bet you're thinking, but Simon, you're gonna shave off your beard. You got this huge beard. I like the beard. Thank you for all the people in the comments who say you like the beard. There is a very other important other part of me that I shave, and that would be my head. I've not tried this before. This is gonna be a first time experience. As well as those four blades, they also sent me this. It's shave butter. All right, honestly, it has been so long since I've used a nice blade. I'm gonna uh, look in my mirror, because I've got a little screen up there, but it's, it's not good enough. Oh. How's that for a look? What do you think? Okay, well I'm gonna finish this up and then I'm gonna join you again. Three, four minutes later, it's all done. It's so smooth. This razor is called an executive razor. Four blades, the blades have six on the front and then one on the back for the, for the little places. And you can get all of this for $5 a month. Just go to dollarshaveclub.com forward slash brain food. Also, I mean, going through that link, it also helps support us here at Today I Found Out. Thanks to Dollar Shave Club for coming along and sponsoring this video. Uh, I'm gonna get on with my day. So I really hope you like that insight into my morning routine. As I said in that clip, you can get your first month of Dollar Shave Club for just $5, which includes an executive razor plus a tube of that wonderful shave butter. After that, your razors are delivered free each month to your door for just a few dollars. Just go to dollarshaveclub.com forward slash brain food and you get your first month for $5. If you go through that link, it helps both us and Dollar Shave Club out, so it would be awesome if you did that. There is a link in the description below. And and as always guys, thank you for watching.